Folks, Tuesday night, welcome aboard. Very special between the roles tonight. Uh, we've got our special guest, Jen, here from Oddfish Games. She's going to go ahead and enlighten you on everything Oddfish, including an RPG with your cat Kickstarter with an update. Uh, let's get the rigmarole out of the way. Follow us on Twitch, follow us on Twitter, take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, join our Discord. If you want to buy a cool thing like our shirt or your phone case, duvet cover whatever uh the link is down there most importantly if you want to be on between the rolls or the one shot this saturday or any other off saturday uh m hobo inc twitter or gmail hit us up we will get you on there this week urban uh setting again uh and we all know how much i love the urban setting uh let's thank our sponsors pirate dog dice if you want some custom made dice uh, the old black and white did really well against the Calamity group the other day. And of course, if your game stinks, unlike ours, ours smells like success, uh, try a little bit of adventure sense in your life. Uh, most of them <laughs> smell great. Some of them, uh, not so much, but we're going to grill Jen on the ins and outs of that here in a minute. They also make something called the Shine System. So if you want to be a writer like myself, only gooder, check out the shine system uh mike was on here oh, a few months back uh so check that out the archives uh either with the money maker face or audio only over on podbean uh but the shine system is currently available uh also current is their kickstarter in how to rpg with your cat i personally have played it i had a great time uh, I didn't win at D&D, &D, but I had a great time, and that's the important thing. Uh, Kickstarter's live for eight more days, but we're going to go ahead and get to the particulars here in just a few more minutes. Uh, and you know what? Let's just get to the particulars now. But first, we'll go ahead and do a quick recap, and then the rest of the time is for Jen. Uh, and she has promised me that her voice is going to hold out, which is great because mine is failing. Uh, two, two, not three, two games this uh, past week. Uh, it was campaign week, so we had Cred and Calamity. In Cred, uh, the worst campaign of the Murder Hobo group. Just absolutely horrible. Uh, it stinks. I, I don't know why anybody watches it, but a few of you seem to like it. Uh, they had... Uh, to deal with the forcibly retired Captain Lothar. Uh, and uh, they also had their new friend, we'll say, uh, Merrick Mistmeadow, uh, and discovered he was a cartographer who was under the command of one of the naval commanders. Uh, those guys went into the tunnels, and because they do not use pirate dog dice, they got their butts handed to them because they roll like crap. Uh, the best. Well, the second best, uh, second best calamity. Uh, this was the B side. These guys went to Jekko. Uh, if you recall, 400 weeks ago, they had to fight off an Anubis looking thing uh, in a rainstorm. And they managed to gain the favor of the citizens of Jekko who allowed them to come in and spend several weeks doing a little R&R. &R. These guys are part of the Vax who are engineering literate. Uh, so this place was nice. Uh, the three heathens uh, even got to meet some uh, instructors, if you will, uh, with some apprenticeships. So Calamity B, Cred A, everything is already in the archive, still on Twitch for a day or two. Uh, audio visual or just audio only so check both of them out this week thursday we've got cacophony uh these guys going on a boat that always goes well and on saturday as i said we've got a one shot in an urban setting spoiler alert i've done this scenario before it didn't get used to its fullest potential uh and it only takes place in one building uh, but there's plenty of things to do. So if you're interested, hit us up, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail, and we will get you on there. I believe it's third level, but I'm not certain. Now, the moment most of you have been waiting for, that's why I'm not talking a lot. Uh, we've been pitching the How to RPG with your cat Kickstarter for quite some time. 
tonight we are fortunate enough to have the creator jen on here she's going to go ahead and give us the uh 911 the scoop uh the skinny the info uh whatever other synonym you want to use jen welcome board murder hobo week we're glad to have you thank you for having me <laughs> our pleasure so uh let's go ahead and start i'm cheating we're using an outline here folks uh and we've got a lot of questions uh that she has volunteered to answer uh so jen tell us a little bit about yourself to start how who are you uh how'd you get into this line of work well um i spent about 25 years working in um, education and disability services and my most recent full-time job was as an instructional designer where I was making multimedia um, like little units to put in online training and online uh, education for, for kids. Um, and one of the things that we found was really useful is adding gamification. Um, so we ended up moving and, and I cut back on my hours for my job and we were spending a little bit more time playing role-playing games and we were trying to get our kids into it. And they were both about middle school age at that time. And we were competing with video games, which they really love. And we were trying to get them into tabletop RPGs. And so we br brought out all the stuff. So we, we had sounds and we had like props that they could touch. And, and, you know, we were trying to create this environment. And I thought, I bet somebody has like some candles or something like that, that, that kind of represent different places you might adventure to. And I looked and I looked and unless we wanted to go adventuring in like, you know, a vat of strawberry juice or a field of linen or something like that, there weren't a lot of really good options, um, especially that were really tied into those, those places that you might go. Um, so I just. Uh, uh, Jello. Jello. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yes. Um, and we actually have have a scent called uh, Pool of Acid that kind of smells like a very sour lime jello. Um, but yeah, so we so we decided to make them. I, like I decided to make them. <laughs> and uh, and he was I was playing around with them and I thought like maybe other people might like this too. And so I figured I'll try kickstarting this. And this was probably like six years back when Kickstarter was still a little smaller, still a little easier to, to handle if you didn't know what you were doing. And we ran a Kickstarter and we far exceeded like what we thought we would, we would get. And we got some good press and we've been running adventures since, since then. And we were talking before the show and uh, you mentioned that like, we didn't do a very good job with the planned obsolescence because apparently the adventure scents from years back are still holding their scent. Um, <laughs> yeah, which we, we weren't sure how long they would last originally. Um, so after Adventure Sense was successful, um, in between doing some other stuff, uh, I, I, I was trying to make myself have more fun doing some of those things around the house that you kind of have to do. And that included cooking. And I like cooking, but I don't like boring day-to-day -day cooking. And I thought, okay, well, is there some way we can mush that together and make a game out of it. And then maybe the kids will want to help too. And, and it'll, it'll be lots of fun instead of this boring weekday, you know, shove a sandwich in their faces kind of thing. Um, so I created cooking with dice, which basically gamifies um, cooking and allows you to um, play through a character um, advancing the ladder until you become the chef de cuisine. So the top of the, the French hierarchy of, of the kitchen. And again, we ran a Kickstarter and again, it did much better than we expected. Um, and so at that point, my husband's like, I got to get in on this. Um, so my husband, Mike, uh, has been working for years on trying to create kind of like outlines and guidelines for himself for writing. And just, you know, he, he put it together and, and developed the shine system, which is a card based writing guide, um, which is a really good way to design, um, whether you're doing a novel or, or more of an adventure campaign, but then he has since then created a couple of others, um, including luminosity, which is kind of very similar to shine, but for, um, creating a campaign or creating, yeah, creating a, a tabletop RPG campaign. And then uh, Radiance, which allows you to uh, add th these extra elements into um, your gaming on more of a tactical level. 
um, drawing cards that that are these plot cards that allow you to decide what's going to happen right now in the game, which allows you to do a lot of fun stuff, including playing by yourself. And it also allows you to um, be able to do kind of a round robin GM session where, you know, different people could take over. So that's super fun. And then the most recent thing that that we've been working on, and this has been in the works for like, oh, like four years at least, is how to RPG with your cat. And I really wish we had gotten this out at the beginning of the pandemic because people have been having a lot of fun with this via Zoom, because obviously it's hard to bring your cat to, you know, your, your gathering with other people's cats. That probably doesn't work out too well, but everybody likes watching cats on Zoom. So um, basically it's that- yeah, it's the internet. Yeah, exactly. That's what the internet is, basically. Um, funny and cats. Um, so I don't remember where why we decided to do this. I think it has has something to do with the fact that I and most of my family tend to be kind of a little introverted or you know, kind of shy in social situations. And so I thought, you know, it'd be great if there was some way that you could just play like at home and if you don't have anybody else to play with then like with your cat or your dog or something like that and so um i developed a whole system based on that and basically it involves replacing the dice in a typical tabletop game uh or tabletop rpg with the chaos of your cat so there are tables that match up to different roles that you might make in a typical tabletop RPG. So let's say you're playing D and D, and you want to make um, a magic attack. So there'll be a specific prompt th that goes along with that that you'll have your cat do, and then based on what your cat actually does, there's a table that shows what happens in the actual um, RPG, like in the game itself. Um, and so we've been working on that for, for years and people always are excited about it at conventions. And we gathered so many names of people who are like, tell me, tell me when it comes out. And finally, just this last year, we've been able to, to get it to that final point and ready to push out on Kickstarter. Um, and, and it's doing great. Uh, you guys yeah. are three times over your goal. Uh, yeah. You still yeah. have eight days, folks, mm -hmm. eight more days. Uh, to go ahead and jump on now uh there's a lot of levels there that yeah. people can do and I, I i will say it uh for the record i thought all of the cat armor was gone mm -hmm. i'm wrong there's still two more suits mm -hmm. out there is there not jennifer there are and those are actually like handcrafted um by one of our uh one of the employees of oddish games who has their own forge and has experience with leather working and it's a combination of cloth armor, chain mail, scale mail, and then it's got a leather belt that kind of wraps around. And it's very lightweight. Um, and I'm sure it, it might not be to the taste of all cats. Um, but if you have a cat who you think might enjoy wearing some armor, or you might just enjoy putting armor on your cat, or just looking at it on a really cool um, stand that goes with it that's, you know, engraved and you know, just is gorgeous, then it's a fun, silly thing. And that was kind of what we were going for. Um, we're, we're trying to make things with our company. We're trying to make like, we, we're trying to make odd things. We're trying to think, make things that make your games more real and make the real world more gamey and to kind of blur the lines between that. And, you know, I've, I've been, using gamification in education for years now. And it's really fun to figure out where to, how you can apply that to other parts of your life, especially kind of around the house. Now, uh, you've got cats, correct? Yeah, we've got three cats. There you go. Uh, now, do they have any armor? Um, <coughs> one of our cats is too light and fluffy to wear the armor and she just instantly smooshed down to the floor. One of the cats is my mom's and won't let me touch him. And the other cat we just got recently. So we haven't established yet whether he could wear the armor, but I think he'd actually look great in it. And I think he could pull it off. Very nice. It won't pinch though, right? Your cat. No, no. no. Uh, there, there you go, folks. Because 
we had one question about that. It's like, doesn't that pinch the cat? Uh, no, I'm, no, it's it's just the belt is is the only thing that's kind of keeping it on, and it's real kind of you can tidy. keep it loose as long as you don't ratchet it as tight as you can. It shouldn't be a problem. Um, and we've kind of talked about the fact that it would work really well on a dog too, but I know I wouldn't trust my dog around it because she would just eat it. But oh yeah, it's just like having dice. You can yeah. throw your cat dice. Yeah, you can't throw your dog dice at all. That's that true. does not happen. Uh, so the overview on mm -hmm. how to RPG cat, uh, you, you just gave it. Now I I got the luxury uh, or the honor, uh, depending on how you look at it, of actually playing on the spaceship one. Mm -hmm. It was uh, was it called the Phoenix? Uh, the Order of the Fix Sphinx. 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 That's right. Now I re I really like that. Uh, I will say for the record. Uh, some cats are much more attuned to playing with you than others. Uh, we all know that cats have that uh, personality flaw that, okay, I'm, I'm done with you. Uh, but I, I liked how you guys added so many things that the cat would appreciate, uh, for lack of a better term, because, you know, once they... Once they decide they're done with you, that's usually it. But uh, the, the, you've been you've incorporated a lot of things that I think managed to keep their interest. And the game, I think our game lasted an hour and ten, maybe. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not horribly uh, obtrusive to your schedule because we all know the cat's not going to sit there for two hours. Yeah, <laughs> absolutely not. So I, I really like that part about that, and. It, it really felt like an RPG game uh, mm -hmm. because it is, uh, but the main inspiration is the cat, not yourself. Mm -hmm. uh, now you'd mentioned you, you've done the Kickstarter mm -hmm. for several things. Uh, what is your opinion, both good and bad on the Kickstarter process for you? I think that we found that from the first Kickstarter that we did, it's become a lot more difficult and you have to, as a, as a company or an individual creator, you have to put a lot more into the preparation for the Kickstarter than you did just a few years ago. Um, I think a lot of that is because a lot of medium to even large size game companies are using Kickstarter. So you have all of that kind of to compete with and people who have really big social media audiences to start with. Um, and you also, it, the, it's also flooded. There are so many people who are coming up with so many cool ideas that you have to find some ways to catch attention, uh, which can be hard. So I would say that I love the Kickstarter process because it's a really good test of the market. It's if I can't sell, I, I think we set our goal for $3,000. If I can't sell $3,000 worth of this product in a month when it first comes out, it, we may need to go back to the drawing board and figure out a way to make this product into something that people are excited about. So I really like that part of it. And I like the fact that it allows us then to, to make that initial investment into the, you know, the stockpile of books and, and allows us to take a little bit of that money and use it for the next, oftentimes for things like art for the, for the next project that we're doing. Um, so I, I, I like the process. It's just we had to put a lot more into um, marketing, I think, this well, time. Well, you got the cool video. Yeah, so, yeah. You know, and and I, I was fortunate enough. Uh, they let me take a look at several versions of it. Mm -hmm. I, I, I gave my opinion. I, I thought all of them were done really well. Mm -hmm. uh, and you, you, chose, you chose a very good one. Uh, I, I'm not saying if it was the one I chose, because mm -hmm. honestly, I don't remember, but the one you chose was dead on. Uh, now, with that, uh, do you do the art or does someone else? And did you want to give them a shout out or do they like to remain anonymous or do you want to keep them closed? No, we actually have them listed on the Kickstarter page even. Yeah, our um, we found our artist through Fiverr, which, you know, is really hit and miss. And we had to, we put out, you know, a lot of, for $5, will you sketch a cat in armor for us until we found somebody who just did an amazing job. And then we jumped on them and, you know, made it, made a deal for a larger, larger purchase. Um, and it's, his name is Tunimals, T-O-N-I-M-A-L-S on Fiverr. Highly recommend. Um, yeah, I, I'm not an art person. I, I'm a 
text person. <laughs> so I can maybe do a layout on a page, but I can't draw. So it's really, it, 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 there's so many amazing artists out there that it's easy to, to wander through, you know, even just Google images and just crave like putting something into a game. Yeah, I really liked it because it, for me, I'm older, uh, but I liked it because it reminded me of the Bugs Bunny dragon. Yeah. Uh, and that was the thing that really caught my attention. I'm like, that is really cool because the cat's kind of evil looking. Yeah. <laughs> but you know, he's the hero. So, or she's the hero. You can't really tell. But, uh, and I really liked it. Uh, and I know I, you know, I, 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 I'm always leery about asking people who their sources are. So that's, mm -hmm. that's why I, I'm glad you can mention it. Uh, oh, and yeah. I'm glad you gave a shout out to Fiverr because uh, that's important. Those people uh, do a nice job. A lot of them do a nice job. They're, yeah, yeah I, you, I'm with you. Some of them are. Whoo. You have to go fishing. You have to put a lot of $5 sketches out into the world before you find somebody who you're happy with. So, yeah. So yeah, I've, I've been really excited. I, and I actually worked for the Cooking with Dice book. We also worked with somebody through Fiverr. So it, it it's worked for us. The cool. thing is, is what what I'm putting in is, is very cartoony. And, and I love that part. Yeah. To me, that works with this product and it worked with Cooking with Dice. Um, it's, it's kind of a cheat in a way, though, because when you have simple, like, well-done line art, the costs are much lower, but it's clean and it and it can really evoke kind of an image and or a, a feeling. And so that's kind of what we we're trying to do. And there are tons of different cats represented. There are some plumper cats and fluffier cats and skinnier cats, um, but they all have that same style to them. Nice. Uh, yeah, I, I'm a big fan of the cartoonish look and the line art uh, because it takes me back to the very old days uh mm -hmm. with otis and some of them now elmore hangs on my wall but otis and uh some mm -hmm. of the other sketchers mm -hmm. uh they just blow you away now uh we know you've reached your goal yep uh and you're still going though eight yep. days folks still That's eight right. more days uh take a look at it tonight google it or go to one of our twitter accounts uh there's a link to it uh on the in, in in lieu of stretch goals, mm -hmm. uh, which I, I, I pro con both of those, I like the way you just spelled it out. Th this is how it is now, because mm -hmm. you've got the dice jail, you've got the other armor. Uh, is, there's a cat scratching post, is there, or no? No. Okay. I think that, there's just an image of a cat that uh, that is on the, yeah. The, that's right. Now, did you, what is your, I guess, thought or reasoning behind not doing stretch goals and unlocking, but doing just the straight up. Uh, we actually do have stretch goals. They're at the, at, at the bottom. Um, Why am I missing these? <laughs> <laughs> it's a long screen. You have to go through a lot of, lot of images before you get to them. Um, we actually did, did the stretch goals a little bit differently. Instead of just doing money stretch goals, we have um a few stretch goals based on money, a few based on number of backers, and then a, a few based on meeting social media follower goals um, so that people have like different ways of, of sharing and, and supporting us. Um, so there's, there's actually a variety. We've unlocked probably five or six now, I think. Okay, I'm looking through, I'm seeing the cat's pajamas, the meow chromancer. Yep. Uh, so is that the stretch goal? My Kickstarter no. abilities are poor. I'll just you have to go to the story part of Kickstarter and then scroll down to the bottom of that. So what you're looking at is the, um, what do they call them? The, the pledge levels. Okay. And it's usually right under the video is something that says like, tell me more, or find out more or read the story. Uh, risk. Oh, there's the story. So, yep. okay. Okay. There it is. And yeah, I, for some reason, uh, Bugs Bunny's dragon always comes to mind. When I, <laughs> that I just love that. Uh, so yeah. Now how uh, curiosity, how are you going to incorporate, uh, people's cats names? 
Um, we actually, for each of the, the prompts, and I think we have 40 prompts in the book, um, there's like a little bit of flavor text that's like, sir pounces, a, sir pounce a lot, you know, and it gives an example of how it might, um, how that prompt might work in a in a game so like an action that the, that's happening in the game and so that's that's where we're going to incorporate the names of people's pets gotcha i like that idea yeah. um so uh, and i thought that was a nice personal touch mm -hmm. uh for him so folks uh, a few of those are still available uh, bah, 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 bah. uh yes folks i'm reading from the outline <laughs> uh now uh, oh, go ahead <laughs> i as I pointed out in the outline, I know the answers to these already. Mm -hmm. Do you have demos of the uh, of this product as to how to run them? Yes, and the easiest way to find them is to go to um, either search for Oddfish Games um, or how to RPG with your cat. And on our our web page, we have links out to um, several people who've reviewed and or played the game with their cats, and you can kind of see how it goes. Um, the the sample that or the sample um, adventure that you played is actually a really simplified version. And it was designed so that we could showcase it on Zoom with multiple cats and give people the idea. Um, and it, it really is designed to be a quick adventure that's got just kind of just some little paths that split apart and come back together. And there's, there's not a huge amount of difference that's gonna happen. Um, but, one of the things that I've been working on is something called Plague of the Hellcat, which is based on the idea that there is a plague that impacts this, this fantasy uh, medieval world um, that everyone is blaming on the cats. Now, this was a great idea before COVID hit and it's, there's an actual plague. So I've, we did decided not to go with that for our showcase, um, but I am working on on that, and that's more that's more designed like a choose your own adventure. So if it's just you and your cat playing, then it gives you a way to kind of walk through and have all these branches and and end up with a lot of different va variations depending on how you play the game. Um, and if we hit, <clears throat> I think it's our next social media stretch goal, then we will release that free to the public um, in monthly installments. Nice. Um, now, do you have it written? I have about half of it written. So okay. I've got enough to pump out plenty while I finish the rest. Yeah, I, uh, I, I've i written a couple of choose your own adventure path, uh, solo adventures. And because I, I grew up with Tunnels and Trolls, um, yep. because, you know, hey, if my friends can't play, I'll just yeah, exactly. Play this. Uh, and those ain't easy to write. Because <laughs> for everything that you do, you have to write like five different versions of it. And then it starts branching and branching and becoming more unmanageable. So you have to cut off paths here and kill off somebody here and somehow get it back to a manageable size. I, uh, I figured out early on that if I named every section after states, and then cities within, it was way easier to scramble them at the end uh, yeah. because I uh, I had tried to get a hold of the troll godfather, mm -hmm. uh, but you know yeah trade secrets so that that was how I figured it out. But oh, there is such an easy way of screwing that up. Yep. But uh, young young writers, uh, that's how you do it. The main section is a state. Everything <laughs> below that is a city. You mix it all up. You do find, replace on word, bing, bang, nice. boom, you're in business. Uh, yeah. But yeah, I, I, I look forward to that. Uh, and you had a stretch goal reached today. Uh, and I believe your winner was one of the hobos. Uh, that's that's just random, folks. Uh, <laughs> so congratulations to Heidi on that one. Yeah, we're, uh, actually, we're running social media contests um, at the same time as the Kickstarter. And for the first two weeks, we ran a a famous cat trivia contest where you had to guess who the cat, famous cat was based on the clues. And then for the second two weeks, we're running caption this cat contests um, for an RPG. So we have, I have, I have a really good one, but mm -hmm. I, I, 
I, I, I've got to step aside because <laughs> uh, that would just not be fair. You could win more adventure sense. <laughs> I, I could, but you know, you, you guys are always uh, very gracious with that and I appreciate it. But uh, as we move back in, I'm going to increase my order again, just because awesome. uh, I can. Uh, so uh, on this, and I'm not sure what the original question meant was, <laughs> Uh, do you take requests? Oh, 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 I know what that was. Uh, and that was an adventure sense. So uh, okay. let, let, let's go ahead and finish up our RPG with Kat first. Uh, tell us more about the social media requests. Da, 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 da. Got that one done. And actually, I think you've covered, you've got the additional scenarios. Mm -hmm. uh, now, after Plague of the Hellcat, do you envision more? I, do you want to make this a series? Possibly, depending on how, how much interest we get. What I would really love to do is take um, take uh, How to RPG with Your Cat and the Plague of the Hellcat adventure and pull it into an app or a web app so that you could just sit there and play with your cat on the phone and you can pause when your cat is bored and come back to the adventure again when your cat's ready. Um, you can have a mouse run across the screen when they start to get bored. There you go. There you go. So um, so that's that's one of the things that we're thinking about in the future. But it, it just kind of depends on on how much interest we get um, in that particular product. Uh, one of the things that, that, that's on the list that I don't think we got to is whether you need a cat. And I always like to point out that really you just need something that's a good agent of chaos. Um, that you can give a prompt and it will react. So you could use a dog if you have a dog. I've actually played with my dog and um, she's disobedient enough that it works pretty well. Um, you can play with a toddler. Most of the, if you dangle the string and stuff, you'll probably get some of the same reactions as a cat. Um, and you could play with a Roomba if you wanted to, just anything that has that that kind of level of, of you're not quite sure what it's going to do in reaction to a prompt. And so it works even with elderly cats or cats that don't, don't like doing stuff because that part of their personality is going to kind of shine through in the game. And you can use the system to either make a character for your cat so that they're playing with you in, in a game that, you, that maybe you've already developed just for yourself or with your friends. Um, or you could actually use your cat's responses to prompts to impact you and the, your character in the game. So like maybe just occasionally, you know, instead of rolling the dice, the GM throws a prompt to the cat to find out what's going to happen next, which can be kind of fun too. Um, so now, yeah. Now, now you're from Bloomington, correct? Mm -hmm. Okay. So you have IU. I'm up here yep. in Lafayette. We've got Purdue. Uh, you had mentioned anything that's chaotic. Uh, do you see a market in, say, the bar scene? <laughs> I think that would be fantastic. I think a, 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 a hot RPG game educational cat. drinking game with cats. You know, you can do something fun. We're actually, I'm thinking about um, if if this goes really well and we've got a lot of interest, then I'm thinking of kind of polling people to find out whether people might be interested in doing something with their dogs, which would really be a different game just because dogs have a different personality and they're much more likely to be a little more consistent about what they do when you give a particular prompt, um, especially if they're well-trained. Um, and so I actually think that we might do something that's more like LARPing with your dog, where you're, you could go out on a walk and then you present different things to your dog as you're moving. And that could be part of the adventure that you're playing. So we're kind of playing around with that. Yeah, we did have an email question. Uh, why the love for cats? What about dogs? <laughs> <laughs> well, at the time we only had cats. We have a dog now, but she's, she's a quarantine puppy. So we didn't have her when we started this up and we just we've always been cat people and it's there's a lot of other cat people out there and the that venn diagram of gamers who are also cat people is really kind of mushed together oh every show we do one of us has a cat wandering across yep. the screen so yep. or, or steve steve mm -hmm. the puppy uh yeah you need to take steve for a while if you want chaos <laughs> uh so uh but we we can expect more right down the road. Okay, Absolutely. very good. And, and you think Plague of the Hellcat this year, maybe? Um, it might be. And 
again, if we hit that stretch goal, we'll release it for free. Otherwise we may release like part of it and, and then, you know, allow people to, to, to pay to like unlock the rest of it, which, you know, depending on your cat, they may only be up for a couple sessions anyways. So. And there, there are limited attention spans with the feline group yep. I have noticed in the past. Yep. Now uh, let's go uh, over to the adventure sense. Yes. Huge fan, massive fan, uh, as everybody uh, is well aware of. Uh, you've got, did I see 60 cents, right? Of our, our, our main line, yeah. We usually now, have some limited time only cents too. Now, do you plan on increasing the volume of the main line? No, I think we're just from here on out going to do limited time only cents. Um, just we can only fit so much in our garage and that, and we're working out of our house and we're, we're trying to keep it manageable. Um, but I think releasing those additional right now, I don't think we have the limited time only sense on our site. We usually just sell them at conventions, but it's been mm -hmm. so long since we've been to a convention that we kind of would like to start putting, creating some and putting some up again so that people have a chance to, to grab some new fun smells that might match their adventure locations. And that brings us into another email question. Uh, what is your convention presence? Now, you and I discussed this uh, in green room, uh, but you know what? They weren't in green room. So mm -hmm. go ahead and tell us about your convention presence. Usually we at least hit Gen Con Origins and something else that's local each year to the to, to Indiana Midwestern area. Um, sometimes we hit a couple of other things that are driving distance. Um, last two years, we have not been able to do Gen Con or Origins just because of COVID and, you know, making sure that we're keeping elderly members of our family safe. So um, we are planning to do both Gen Con and Origins next year, fingers crossed. And, uh, and it's really fun to do the conventions because we set up a sniffing station. And I think a lot of people really enjoy that, that kind of like hands-on and getting to try something out. I know that before I started doing this, I was definitely the kind of person who, if we were walking in the mall and we passed one of the, the goop or candle shop or shops, then I would just start veering off like involuntarily and smell everything. I don't do that anymore because there's plenty of smells at home, but, um, but yeah, so um, we're definitely planning to, to step up that convention presence as we go. And we're gonna have to kind of think about what our booth's gonna look like in the future with multiple products now. Uh, you're gonna have to go for the bigger booth because yeah. I, I, I know uh, going to Gen Con the past, well, not the past two years, but before that, uh, your booth is always full and yep. you can only fit a couple of people in there. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and granted booth space is expensive, but yeah, with all your other product lines, uh, but you can, you can always get into the gaming uh, rotunda and uh, do the how to RPG with your cats. Uh, and that's great. And I, I believe we've seen you at Hoosier Con, have we not? Yes, that's one of my favorite conventions because it's, it's pretty local. It's really low key. And the nice thing is, is that there's not a huge number of vendors and people don't have to pay to get in, which means that it's different from Gen Con where people are only coming in with so many dollars to spend and there's 10,000 booths that they have to choose from. Um, so, and, and the people who run at Hoosier Con are super nice and it just seems like a laid back good time for everybody. Um, so yeah, we've, we've, we've done that too. And um, that's usually one of the local ones that we hit. But have, uh, have you heard about not a convent, not a con? Not a con? It's, not a con. It's uh, the end of October and it's an indie. It's on the east side. Oh, I think I saw a sign for that. Yeah. yeah I don't know so, anything about it. Yeah. We, uh, uh, we do a lot of research on tabletop.events mm -hmm. uh, because we like to go. And uh, for the other cons, we just send stuff, uh, yeah. including Adventure Sense, because mm -hmm. again, huge fan. Uh, but uh, I know it was a huge hit uh, mm -hmm. in North Carolina. Yep. Uh, and uh, some of the other places we've sent it to always, always positive feedback, which is great. Uh, but again, I knew you did cons, <laughs> but and we, you know, do, and we sponsor and <clears throat> donate loot to cons all the time too, because it's just, it's too hard to like ship everything you need to do a booth somewhere else. We've tried it before and it's kind of a nightmare. So, um, 
So if it's not like easy driving, then it's kind of hard for us to get there. But we, it's really nice when we're able to donate it, especially if people are able to incorporate it into their games. So, so if anybody's plan is planning to GM a game at a con coming up, then feel free to contact us. And a lot of times we can work something out to at least get some samples to you. I, I, I will say from experience, everybody at the in-person cons absolutely adores the adventure sense it really does bring a spice uh a lot of times we were talking about this in green room i did the mayan temple i've done the shipboard and when you get that scent in there and just they, they sell them in tins they sell you know the the small packs but the tins are an excellent purchase because they're only what like 10 bucks or something 15 yeah 15 uh it will get everyone's attention in the room uh because it i i don't want to say pungent like it's bad but it's very aromatic uh and, and just to get that in there if you're aboard ship and you you've got the pirate ship scent it does bring that extra sense of hey okay I, i've got this it's almost like music only for your nose uh so yeah we whenever we're around we always pick them up dms if you get a couple of these babies in there and you guys are still doing the buy some get some yep. free thing right mm -hmm. highly recommend uh it, it's not a huge hit to your wallet and your players will really and really enjoy it and they will mention it uh because that just makes you look like a better dm because mm -hmm. you're prep you're, you're giving them free swag uh mm -hmm. and everybody loves it uh it, it's very economical uh, especially for what it gives back. So that that's my separate pitch for you guys on that. <laughs> Huge fan of it. Um, <clears throat> now, when you came up with your, well, no, it's backtrack. So your special event sense, mm -hmm. how do you, do you like find out what the con is and then kind of go in that direction? Or do you just say, screw it, it's 2022, the scent is going to be peppermint? Well, honestly, what we do is when we order the full size bottles of oil that we use to make our main line of scents, they send us sample size bottles of other smells that that, that they that they have oftentimes. And so we end up with a bunch of smaller sample sizes, um, sometimes multiple of the same same fragrance oil from um, the wholesalers that we buy the, the fragrance oils from. So we sit down, look at all the things we have. We look at all the, the things that we have from our main line as well. And we just start mixing and trying to, to find, trying to think of like what a place smells like because all of these scents are based on adventure locations so mm -hmm. the idea is to try to bring you to that place and so we've covered most of the really common ones in our main line so we start thinking outside of the box and like what do we not have we don't have a, like a fast food restaurant or we don't have a movie theater or a swimming pool and sometimes we're not it will try like swimming pool I think, I think we tried real hard to hit something that had that right chlorine note and we could not find a base oil that would give us that chlorine smell. So oh, Homeland Security shut you down? Yeah, maybe. <laughs> oh, I'm sure I'm on a watch list because we have those little bags um, that are ba odor barrier bags and they're designed so that like the, the scent won't leak through, which it will if it's just a, a Ziploc bag, which we found out during our Kickstarter. Um, and I, I guess that those are used to ship drugs in the mail a lot. So I think that's one of the reasons that sometimes there's some extra time in customs when we ship things internationally. And one of the one of the requests that we've gotten the most often is, do you have a pot smell? And I'm like, no, but we do have fragrance oil for it. And I've been tempted for so long to do a music festival scent that's like, you know, marijuana and patchouli. And like, yep. there you go. But then I don't want to ship it. I, do, I don't want to. I just I can foresee so many ways that that could go wrong. So we're well, holding on. My, if Miami Vice has taught us anything, you, you pack it in coffee. Right, <laughs> right. <laughs> that yeah, won't be suspicious at all. Yeah, I, I did not consider the customs agents uh, yeah. with that to so, say, so, yeah, that because I, I mean, these, uh, you guys sent these to us. And granted, I think it was a day because we're so close. Uh, but when you seal it, it, it lasts a really long time. Uh, so, and you can't 
you can barely scent it. I, I don't know if the police dogs would pick up on it. Uh, but if you had, I guess, a big box of it, uh, yeah. especially if it were all the same thing. Yes. Now, when I ordered this last group, it was just a cornucopia yeah. of stuff. And I opened up the box. I'm like, I'm not sure what I got, but there's yeah. stickers on it. So, uh, which is a plus. Uh, yeah. But yes, you, but the baseline is set. You're done. Mm -hmm. Sorry, Kyle. And you know what I mean. Uh, <laughs> Let's move on to the shine system uh, so that they can write much more gooder than me is the tagline I always use. Uh, we did have Mike on here. Uh, so if, if you're interested in getting an in-depth look at it, folks, uh, check the archives. I, I think I had the Odd Fish Games background or something like that. Uh, is the, you had mentioned uh, the next incarnations of luminos luminosity and I radiance. I think that's what he's going with, yeah. Okay. And radiance. Uh, what uh, what's the timeline on that look like? And is there a Kickstarter associated with it? So yes, actually, those are just about ready to go. Um, I think Mike's doing a little bit more play testing with a few people to try to tr try to get everything kind of hammered out. And I think uh, right now we have Shine, a simplified version of Shine available online as a PDF. Um, but the the tool itself is is meant to be. A set of cards um and it works really well that way i i've done some some book outlines and some adventure outlines using the system and it really makes it a lot easier and it really helps you get past that writer's block kind of like what am i going to do next whether you're writing a story or whether you're you're writing an adventure which kind of has a different way of approaching it um, and i think the plan is that we're probably going to release all three of those products together in some way in a Kickstarter. Um, okay. I'm not sure yet what that's going to look like, um, but they are lined up. We're going to start the preparations for that Kickstarter as soon as we um, get through the, the worst <laughs> of the fulfillment process uh, for the RPG Cat one. And it again, it just takes a lot of time to build up all of the the graphics and other mm -hmm. assets that you need for the Kickstarter and to start getting followers and, and getting people interested. So I would guess that we're going to be looking at early next year for that. Cool. Q1 maybe. So Yeah. So so he actually, one of the things that, that kills Mike is every time he goes and looks at Kickstarter and it's like, oh no, another person came up with a writing system that involves using cards or somebody else used this small mechanic that I use in my game. So he's very excited to get it out. Um, and I keep reassuring him that like, I haven't seen anything like the, the way that you combine these products, whether again, whether you're writing a story or a game is unlike any, any other product that's out there. And he could speak to it a lot better than I can. Um, I've used it a few times, but I get confused because I've seen it, like you were saying earlier, I've seen it in many different incarnations, like a lot of different versions of it. And like, he's really managed to refine it over time as well, so. Yeah, I picked up two copies of it. I, I kept one and I gave one to Kyle uh, mm -hmm. because both of us write the most. Kyle adores it, he really yeah. does. Uh, me, I'm older. So I, I, I'm kind of set my ways. One thing that we did have a question on it, because it is card based, and for those of you not familiar with it, uh, when we say cards, it's more of a flash card kind of thing. Um, are, do you or he have any plans on actually making it like an oversized playing card. Yes, that, okay. that's what we would kickstart. And we would kickstart physical versions of all of the products. Again, the even the PDF that's up there doesn't have all of the description and all of the details that are on the, the cards that are already designed. And we've got some prototypes ready to go. And um, so, yeah, so we would really like that to be a physical card that has that Lux feeling to it when you touch it and also that allows you that has like enough of a shine on it that no pun intended that, that you can write on it with a, <laughs> that you can write on it with a wet erase marker and, okay. and kind of have notes about where you're going um I'm also trying to talk them into turning it into a like a notebook that has kind of like here's here's the prompt and some things to think about and here's where you can write your stuff and kind of walks you through that process like the old tab version yeah. of, yeah, I, I like that. That's a good idea. I, I really like the system. Mm -hmm. uh, again, I'm old. I've written a lot. <laughs> yeah, it uh, works so better if you're not sure 
how to write something as big as a novel. And I know I've several times had ideas in my head that I thought, ooh, that would make such a good novel. And then I say, Jen, you know what? There's no way you have the attention span. <laughs> you don't, you can't hold something in your head that long. Like it's it's not gonna happen. And your plate might be a little full. Yeah, it is a little bit right now. Yeah. But yeah, for, for new writers, neophyte writers, uh, even intermediate yeah. writers, I, I like the approach that you guys took on that. And I highly recommend it. Uh, you know, an old grognard like me. <laughs> no, and but, it, it, it's not really necessary, but it is nice sometimes when you do get stuck in your writing mm -hmm. to have someplace you go, like whatever that is. Like for a while, I, would, I, I do a lot of writing, but I do a lot. My writing is usually short blips. Um, and and I went to, there's one where you type for kittens and the more words you type, then the more pictures of kittens it'll show you. So like whatever helps get you through that agonizing process, that's also a wonderful process mm -hmm. of writing, then, you know, I think it's worth taking a look at the tools that that might work best for you. And I think there are planners and there's plotters and there's people who already have a system and there's people who are still looking for a system. So I'm to the point now where, oh, I should do something in this. Mm -hmm. Done that. <laughs> Maybe I could do it better. But yeah, I really like yeah. the Shine system. Uh, and again, uh, younger writers, highly yeah. recommend. Uh, very economical. Uh, take a look at it or wait. Wait a couple mm -hmm. months. Uh, check out Q1 next year and we'll do that. Uh, last on our agenda, Cooking with Dice. You mentioned it earlier. Uh, Kyle actually has a copy of that and, and loves it. And uh, something to go along with that is I recently discovered through the Twitterverse that there is a fast food restaurant in Toronto Ooh. that uses a D20. Oh, yes. And you have to order via your character sheet by the roll of the die. Oh, I love uh, that. And uh, I, I, I found that somewhere on Twitter and I, I hit the poster up and they're like, oh yeah, it's in Toronto, da 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 da. That's but, so cool. Yeah, so <laughs> Cooking with Dice, chance of a second book? Or yeah, actually, to? I think the way, the way I'm approaching that is I think that we're probably gonna pull the original book apart into two sections, one of which is the, the actual game rules and then the other part is that adventure and then we will we'll um we might put the the actual rules just out for free and then sell hard copies if people want them um but then focus on developing adventures that that go along with the, with the rules and basically the idea is is that um the book presents you with like a story and some some you know flavor but it but it also presents you with these formulas for different types of foods that you're that you're making. So like if you're making ceviche or something like that, um, the idea is, is there'll be certain ingredients in that formula that you can substitute. And one of the ways you can substitute it is by rolling a dice and looking at the table that goes along with it and putting that in there. And it allows you to try like some really interesting combinations. There, we're not going to like put chocolate on fish or something like that but but it might be something that's a little ah. outside of your like what you already cook and what you already eat and it's also designed to be really simple recipes that you can do with your kids so the first book is actually based on cooking with acid just because i don't know why we picked that one to start with um but it allows you to cook without having to have um like a a stove. So it's easier to implement in like a classroom or a summer camp program, something like that. You just need a microwave. Um, and in some cases, a refrigerator. Um, and uh, you're making things like cheeses and, and fun stuff to do with kids in particular. Um, and so I think we'll probably split that apart um, and, and have several different adventures. We actually have all of the recipes, photos, um, most of what we need for the next book, which is called going to be called Cold Fusion, where you're basically taking um, 
you're taking frozen food, um, like boring old regular frozen foods, and you're doing something to it with kind of an ethnic flair to change it completely into something else. So one of the things that that's in there is a mummy hand pizza. So you take a nice cheese pizza, and then there's a whole bunch of fun ingredients that have kind of a Greek flavor to them, um, Mediterranean flavor to them. Um, and then you fold up the pizza, the raw pizza, and then you cut the dough in a certain way and then wrap it with a little bit of pizza dough and you end up with something that looks like bandaged fingers and you can kind of eat, eat it finger by finger with some cool dipping sauce. And so it's a way of jazzing up boring old frozen food and giving it new life. And the important thing is it's suitable for children. Absolutely. Yep. So that, that's, that's a really big thing. Now we do have to say, because uh, Eileen always likes me to say it, uh, do not eat <laughs> the adventure, the adventure sense. sense. No, don't eat that, uh, yeah. and don't don't add it to the toppings. And yeah. that's they aren't talking like real acid or Woodstock no. acid. No, no, not that kind of acid. Two different things, folks. Uh, so cooking there's... with acid would be a different different story completely. This is lemon juice and vinegar and things like that. Yeah, and I I, I don't think you'd have a, a big sale for that because no. I think they that's a great idea. Yeah. <laughs> Now I don't remember it, uh, but no, that, that that's good. Uh, timeline on uh, the incarnation of that. That's probably our next Kickstarter after, or our next release after the Shine stuff. So next year would be my guess. I've got a few other projects in the works. I'm working on a game that uh, allows you to gamify doing chores and things like that around the house, like yeah, as a family or by yourself. Um, and it's the context is like the, like the Victorian great houses and that, that hierarchy of servants and trying to like fulfill the requirements of your job so that you can like work your way up that ladder to similar to cooking with dice where you're trying to work your way up the ladder. Um, and I'm, I'm kind of working on it right now to try to cram as much fun into it as I can, because until it's fun, it's, it's not worth like sharing with anybody else. Now, if you're rolling that 20, do you just get to call somebody to do the chores? No, but the, I think we're going to do something similar with cards where like you're drawing cards that have the different different chores on them. And if you get one of those that says delegate, then you're going to be able to delegate one of your chores to somebody else. Nice. That, yep. That's not, you know, that thing's going to get the folded corner. tree. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Very, uh, very true. That, that is excellent. I, I'm glad that we were able to at least scratch the surface of everything because uh, sometimes uh, we don't get to everything. Uh, with that being said, uh, we can go ahead and do the wrap up. Uh, go ahead and make your pitch for the Kickstarter first. That's the important part. Oh, gosh. OK, put me on the spot. Um, if you have a cat and you like to play tabletop games, then check it out and see if see if you think it looks like something that would be fun for you. There's a lot of information on the Kickstarter. Um, and, you know, sometimes it's worth doing something really silly. And I think that's what we're trying to do is just get a little silly with things. You got a little over a week, eight days, mm -hmm. uh, seven days starting tomorrow. So about a week, uh, very reasonable price, a lot of levels, a lot of mm -hmm. stretch goals. Go ahead and check it out. Uh, if you're feeling really sparky and want to put your cat in uh, scale mail, it's mm -hmm. still there. And there are pictures on the Kickstarter itself. So if you're like, eh, I really don't know what this is going to look like, mm -hmm. uh, you'll like how it looks. Mm -hmm. uh, we'll look for the uh, Shine Compendium, mm -hmm. uh, for lack of a better term, next year, uh, as well as more Cooking with Dice. Uh, do you have any in-person convention plans slated the rest of Excuse we're, me, the rest of the year. Not for this year, but we're definitely aiming for, for Gen Con Origins and then hitting some local stuff next year. I'm hoping I'm hoping none of them have gone under because of not, you know, being able to run at full capacity the last the last couple of years. But we really like to hit Hoosier Con again um, and check out what's what's out there that we haven't haven't hit in a while. Yeah, huge fan. Uh, March, April is when they usually do it. Uh, mm -hmm. Usually the last week of March or the first week of April. It's mm -hmm. on the west side of Indianapolis. So yep. if you're ever curious, uh, as Jen pointed out, it is free. Yeah. Very fun con. Mm -hmm. uh, everybody is very personable, uh, except for that one game table <laughs> that I had that first time. I swore we were going to get 
thrown out of a convention. Oh, no. <laughs> those, those guys had a lot of fun, but you got to remember there's kids. So it's mm -hmm. kid friendly. So some of the comments got sparky, <laughs> uh, but had a great time. Uh, and, and they have, uh, I forget what they call it, but uh, an enhanced gamer pack for like a hundred bucks uh, and, and a whole lot of stuff. Plus you get to see Jen, maybe see me running a game, hard to say. Uh, and not really hard to say. You'll see me running a game. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, I'm a big fan of the conventions. Uh, I don't know if I'll be able to make it down to not a con, I think, mm -hmm. is, I think is what it's called. Uh, it is on the east side. So if you're, if you're a Hoosier resident or one of the adjacent states, uh, check that out. I think it's October 29th. Uh, but yeah, we look forward to seeing you again. Uh, anytime you get the chance to stop by Jen's booth, uh, I highly recommend oh. it, if not to smell the scents yourself, but to <laughs> make uh, a friend, family, or loved one smell something putridy sewers uh, and watch them gag. Do not inhale deeply. There, there you go, Eileen. I said it again. Do not inhale deeply <laughs> on some of these scents. You will choke. Check the YouTube archive for that. Look for Kyle dying, which was hilarious. <laughs> uh, other than that, can you think of anything else? Any last minute pitches, Jennifer? No. Folks, uh, we'll call it a night. Follow us on Twitch. Follow us on Twitter. Take a look at our YouTube archive. If you want to shoot the shit about D&D, &D, join our Discord. If you want to be on the talk show or on one of the one shots, M Hobo Inc., Twitter or Gmail. Don't forget to follow at Oddfish Games or at Oddfish Games or hit their website, oddfishgames.com. Uh, thank you, Pirate Dog Dice, uh, for dice that didn't get used because it's between the rolls. Uh, and of course, thank you to Oddfish Games for coming on, uh, giving us the uh, 911, the skinny, uh, the info on your products. Huge fans. Uh, we love it. Uh, and we look forward to, uh, we congratulate you on your success for this Thank Kickstarter you. and look forward to the rest of your Kickstarters. Remember folks, eight more days, check it out. Kickstarter, how to RPG with your cat. Uh, for all of us here at Murder Hobo Inc., that's a wrap. You can go watch the Yankees Red Sox game or do whatever you want. Jen, thanks for joining us. Really appreciate it. Bye everybody. Bye-bye.